how the mutations and items and all that other stuff comes together. The combinations are so vast. You know, it's a procedural world. We're gonna have millions of combinations of how the world can come together. But it's always great to work with Lee. He, I know he can handle making the art look good. It's really just on the tech side, can we handle making it interesting enough and repeatable enough and predictable enough and tunable enough mm -hmm. to achieve kind of what we want to do. Red. It's a number of different parts. Over here we'll see another level that generated. This one got one of these more unique rooms here. As you can see, this has this little hidden part back here. So, secrets. Yeah, the random generation, I think, was one of the more unique challenges. Which is a really difficult part with roguelikes, because a lot of your random map generation can make a map that you can't finish. That's kind of a bummer as a player. And that's always been a challenge for the team to, how do you make it provably solvable? Matt coming in, came in and handled a lot of the graphics system. Um, and a lot of sort of the procedural system we use for growing vegetation and burning fire and all that stuff across the world. Being a sphere, setting it to like that size and showing how like an object looks like it doesn't sit very well in the terrain. But if I turn on the terrain blending, then you can make an object like fit better. I really enjoy roguelikes, and a lot of them, they're a very elegant, like, simple formula. So the worlds in red are comprised of lots of these tiles. This corner piece, like, we might put some bridge metadata there to say, hey, if there's another piece over here that accepts a bridge, draw a bridge across. And this one is interesting because it's not next to that and doesn't have a bridge. The player wouldn't actually be able to access that unless they had a mutation to get there. Just add more variety to the experience. Around the time that we were starting art production, VR art tools were starting to become a thing. So this piece here is um, uh, one of the uh, rare tiles that comes up later in the game. That was a pretty quick process, and I exported that and put it into game as kind of a white box. Proof of concept, make sure it would actually feel good to walk around it. You can look at it in game if you want. So here is that same tile. One of the other tricks of our game is um, it has to work from all angles, a lot of these tiles. I sort of feel like all the sort of concept art being this very separate thing from the actual game art is slowly starting to converge. And I, you know, VR art, VR tools are kind of one step in that way, but it's not just about VR, it's just about the tools being a little more immediate. That whole game, like the main message that uh, Lee kept driving at us was about mutation and how everything changes and you have to adapt. And, I really felt like we did a good job of getting the audio and the music to do that as well. Because it's been this huge apocalypse, so there's just these massive canyons of doom, right? And we weren't doing much with them, but I kept thinking, um, that's, a really, that's a really interesting part of the game. Like, you can use it in gameplay. You can knock people off the cliff. Jump. And you get a feeling when you're fighting, like there's definitely a feeling of danger because you don't want to fall. And I, so I started thinking about, I wonder if there's a way audio can help with that gradual reverb. It's just, it knows where you are in relationship to its edge. So the farther you're away from the edge, the drier your sounds. But if you get right up to the edge, like in real life, it reverbs out in the canyon. It just feels more dangerous. Red documentary. Yeah. Are you guys making the red documentary? Yeah. Uh, and then we're we're just cruising and. Mm -hmm. Uh, being around for launch and launch support after that, so that's yeah, exciting. and all that's getting laid out. But yeah, we're kind of at the the end of the road. I was uploading a uh, PS4 build here to reviewers, and I noticed that I had these old playthrough videos that are from about a year ago. Yeah, that's what one one and one two looked like a year ago. That's 
insane. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, it's good to see that. It's always painful because you look back and you're like, I thought that looked and felt pretty good. And then you look back a year ago and you're like, that's pretty terrible. <laughs> so it's good. But yeah, we're at the point now where it's just polishing, which is really nice because I've definitely been on projects where at this point it's, you know, there are major game breaking things that are still happening and you're just hoping it all gets done in time to just get it out the door. So, you know, because the other thing that happens is when you're in that panic mode, it's, it's easy to just make another mistake. And so the fact that we are able to just work regular hours. Everybody comes to work, they're ready to go, and we can just keep doing things the way we've been able to do it. I am very proud of the fact that we have not done crunch. <laughs>